Hey everyone, how are you doing today? So today what I'm going to talk about in this video is boxed corners. A lot of bag patterns have uh, this concept of a boxed corner and what this does is it adds depth to the bag. But oftentimes it's really hard as a new bag maker to understand what it is you're supposed to do. And a lot of the patterns have not poor instructions, but difficult to understand instructions if you haven't actually seen the technique before. So I'm gonna have this really quick video go over boxed corners, what they are, some tricks that I use to make sure that the seams line up and how to actually sew that seam. Um, so let's get into it. So I'm gonna go over really quickly what a boxed corner is. In my beginning tote bag tutorial, we had a very simple rectangle. And so this would be the top of the bag and the bottom of the bag and you seamed down the side, down the bottom and up the other side. And so the bag didn't have any depth. And what that means is that you basically would fill up the bag and it would start to bulge at the bottom of it. So as you start to get further into bag making, you'll want to start adding that depth before kind of diving into like a gusset, which would give the bag this kind of three dimensional look. My art is fantastic, by the way. <laughs> so <laughs> then you get a grocery bag. And so this here would be considered the gusset. But that's a little more advanced and, and, and a little more complicated to do. And so what you'll find is that a lot of bag makers will make it so that you have this, just this line here at the bottom and you create that with a boxed corner. So we'll go ahead and get rid of this. And so what you'll do is you, you make, you know, say, say this is gonna be nine inches tall and it's gonna be seven inches wide. Uh, if you want depth to be two inches, you need to come out one inch to the side of your pattern piece and one inch to the bottom, like that. And then depending on what your seam allowance is, you're going to add that to each of those little wings coming off of your main pattern piece. And so for me, I normally, when I write patterns, include a half an inch. And so we'll have an additional half an inch in here. And so what you end up with in this whole section here is an additional 1.5 inches, but you leave this section down here empty. And the reason for that is because what you'll do for boxed corners, you'll stitch down this side, stop, stitch down this side and stop. And of course, so this would be on the other side as well. I don't wanna leave that out. Stitch up that side and stop for each of your pieces. And then to add the depth, you'll pull these pieces together, these seams that you have made, and then stitch across. And that's kind of where I, I feel like it's difficult to understand what's going on and why I want to make this uh, video demonstrating it because it really can be confusing to explain with pretty pictures um, what's going on here. So let's let's go ahead and get a practical example going um, and uh, show you guys what a box corner looks like once you're done. So what I have here are two pieces of waterproof canvas uh, and I wanted to use a stiffer fabric to help kind of illustrate, uh, demonstrate this a little better um, because if I use something that's really loose and flimsy, you're not really gonna understand what's going on. So what I did was I just went ahead and cut out the corner on each end and I would suggest doing this just for practice. This is not actually a bag pattern um, and they need to be opposite each other. As you can see, I kind of forgot that and left that there. Um, so we're gonna take our right sides and put them together just like this and clip along the edges on each side and just forget that I did that we'll just we'll just kind of forget the mistakes were made <laughs> okay <laughs> mistakes happened so we're gonna stitch across the bottom and across the side here, but do not stitch in this area. This is what you want to leave alone. All right, so we're gonna take that to the sewing machine and stitch it really quickly. 
All right, at the machine, you're gonna go first with a half inch seam allowance across the bottom section. So we're gonna stitch forward back. And as we get to that boxed corner, you're gonna back stitch. And I'm on an industrial walking, walking foot machine, so again, like if this looks weird to people, I apologize. <laughs> but don't stitch anything else in this boxed corner. Take cut and switch right back over to what would be considered the side seam. Back stitch. And sew all the way up to the top. Okay. So that's all the sewing that you're going to do on this portion just for this. And you'll see that we have left all of this open. Okay, so now we're gonna go back to the other view and I'm gonna show you what you're supposed to do to get this to work and look like, you know, like a corner on a bag for depth. Yeah, I can explain things really well, I swear. Now that you're back over at your cutting table, one of the things I like to tell people is to go ahead and trim this down by a quarter inch. And that's just to get rid of a lot of the bulk. You don't really need to worry about it from a sense of, of maintaining seam allowance here. That won't have anything to do with it. So, because the bottom of the bag and the sides of the bag, um, you really don't want that much seam allowance left over. The reason that there's such a wide seam allowance in bag making um, is to allow for little mistakes, <laughs> which happen all the time. So something that could be very helpful is to take like a point turning tool, or this is actually a book binding tool, and kind of run up the seam just very carefully, not too hard. You don't, wanna, you don't wanna score the seam in such a way that you're poking through, but it'll help you kind of get it to lay flat. And the other thing you can do is you can go and you can steam this down. Um, I am using waterproof canvas, and so I wouldn't wanna put my hot iron on this side because it's PVC coated. But you want to split out the side seam, both of the seams really, so that they're kind of flayed open like that. But what you do is you kind of pinch these guys together and you line up, rawr, you line up the seam allowance right there, the seams for the bottom and the side like this. And that makes your boxed corner. So again, if you were to take this, you just kind of take these ends. I kind of find it helps to hold it up a bit open it up, but then just pinch those two together so that they're lined up. Now, when you go to sew them, oftentimes what'll happen is because of the foot having so much pressure, so much downward pressure on it, um, that you'll slip and that your seams won't line up and that's terribly annoying. And so one of the things that I like to suggest to people is to take a little piece of tape so open this up, and I, I mean, you can use half inch or quarter inch. This is half inch. Let's, let's actually get quarter inch tape because I use leather tape and this does not wash out. If you want, you can use Dritz wash away tape um, and it will wash away, uh, hence the name, uh, when you're done with it. However, um, it's not as sticky, uh, so it doesn't, it doesn't work as well as I'd like. I'll just take a little bit of this stuff and on the exterior part, because you're gonna put your, your right sides together, I just kind of stick it on one side, right over the seam, and get the, the paper off so I can actually expose the, the other side. <laughs> like, oh, we're recording. That means I'm not gonna work today. Okay, don't cut your nails if you're a seamstress. Um, and then just kind of take these guys, open them up, and line them up and then press down to keep, to keep them from shifting. And so that'll stop it from doing any kind of wonky shifting when you're sewing it. Open up the side seams so that they're laying flat. That will reduce bulk. You don't have to do that, but it does reduce bulk and it does help. Um, 
and then just clip it down and hold it. Now, depending on how big your, your boxed corner is going to be, you may want to put more clips on here. This is just a little, um, there's, it was just one and a half inches on either side, just like it did in the demo. So we're not gonna worry about a lot of clips, but um, yeah, in general, you just clip that and then you have the two corners right there. And so when we go to the sewing machine, we're going to stitch a half away from the edge from the top to the bottom. Let's organize that right. Top to the bottom, um, a half inch away. And you'll note, you'll note that this is um, definitely on a slant. And so if you have trouble eyeballing it, then what you can do is you can mark that half inch so that you know where to place it when you start. Okay, so let's go over to the machine and we're gonna stitch right down there across the opening of the boxed end. All right, so at the sewing machine, I already marked where I want that half inch to be so I know where I need to start, although you can, if you want, just use your uh, usual measurements there. Um, and you, you want to start like kinda at the end, not right at the end, um, maybe maybe closer, like right right about here, because other like one stitch away from the edge, because otherwise it's going to create this really weird pinch. It's kind of like sewing darts in in a shirt or a blouse. So start just a little bit from the end. We're going to make sure this is a stiffer fabric. You might not have this problem, uh, you know, with with a regular fabric, but I need to kind of hold down. So we're gonna start and back stitch and then go across. And this part, again, the, I folded these out because I wanted to reduce the bulk. If you're having trouble with the bulk, you can use a humper jumper. But carefully stitch over that end and all the way down to the other marker. And just like at the other end, you don't wanna go all the way to the end, so back stitch when you're about a stitch away from the very end where it's folded up. And so this is what you should have is a nice stitch about a half inch away from the what was the opened boxed seam. Okay, back at the cutting table, let's clean up our threads. I'm always pretty bad about that. <laughs> and you're gonna trim this down as well. Again, don't have to, but it does make it easier. I trim down to about a quarter inch, being careful right there at the seams and throw that away. Now what you'll do is you're gonna flip this right side out. So we're gonna, now this is easy because I only stitched one side of it, it's kind of cheating, but flip it right side out. And this is why I used a stiffer fabric. But you can take a point turner and kind of go in here as needed to get everything kind of pushed outward. But as you can see, there's a nice boxed corner. My seams line up and that was thanks to the tape because I guarantee you, even with the walking foot machine, they wouldn't line up perfectly and it would be very annoying. I have nice, nice points here at the corners. And of course, if you had stitched all the way to the end, these would kind of be pinched looking and it might cause creases um, up the side. Now, again, this type of bag boxed uh, box corner style um, is a great beginner style because what happens at the top of this bag is like you can either you can either have it come up and and be like a really cute messenger or if you want you can put a zipper up here and then you have then you have a zipper pouch that has uh, depth to it so it's a really nice box corner so I hope that helped you out and helped you understand how boxed corners are made, how to get your seams lined up correctly. And if you want to start you know, taking that tote tutorial and adding depth to a very simple tote, this is how you can do it. So thank you very much for watching. Please like and subscribe. Um, if you like live streamed content, I also stream live on Twitch on Mondays, Tuesdays, Thursdays, and Fridays from 8 p.m. until 10 p.m. Central. Thank you so much. Bye.